morning, everyone. Josh with Severe Weather. Happy Thursday to you. Uh, we've got action in the tropics to talk about, some big changes in the forecast as well coming up over the next week or so, and we're going to get right to it here. So welcome to my channel. Uh, we do have hurricane watches posted and tropical storm watches posted from two separate storm basins. Uh, resort areas, a lot of you guys like to travel. Now we're getting towards the tail end of hurricane season, it's starting to get cooler out. And those of you that have plans to go to Cabo here, I do want to definitely watch this video as we now have a major hurricane, Norma, uh, which is expected to inch closer here to Los Cabos and Cabo San Lucas here in the Baja of California here as we get towards the end of the weekend and beginning of next week. Uh, bigger threat in the shorter term, although not as strong a storm here in the Atlantic, we now have a tropical storm watch for portions of the Lesser Antilles, basically the northern Windward Islands, including Barbados, as well as the southern and central Leeward Islands. And this area has avoided catastrophe this year. We've had some weaker systems. We are going to keep an eye on Tropical Storm Tammy, uh, our 20th named storm of the Atlantic season. Um, thankfully, not expected to be a powerful storm system, but still an impactful one with stronger winds, heavy rainfall expected potentially in this area later in the day tomorrow, and especially tomorrow night into the first part of the weekend. And once again, we are seeing a system which was predicted to stay east of the island starting to shift back to the west. And the reason for that uh, is that we have seen stronger wind shear, which takes these lower level centers and kind of separates them from the upper level flow, uh, which would typically steer a stronger storm away to the north and east more quickly. We're not yet seeing that here with Tammy. We've got another area to keep an eye on uh, that may develop into our next storm in the Pacific. The name on the list would be Otis. And that could impact yet another resort area here of the Mexican Riviera later in the week next week. So the tropics are still very busy, but fortunately in the Atlantic, the only system on the map expected over the next week is Tammy. Tropical storm with winds of 40 miles per hour and is tracking to the west very quickly at 17 miles per hour. It's expected to slow down a bit here as we get into the weekend. And pressure is still kind of high, 1,006 millibars, so not a very intense storm. And this season for the Caribbean is going to be one where we have weaker storm systems, but a lot of rainfall, a lot of disorganization, as you might expect during an El Nino. So the warm ocean waters have led to more storms, a lot of weaker shorty type storms. Um, and we're up to 20 here, which is well above the average. But what I will say is that of those storms, really only a few became very impactful. And we still do have a month to go. Remember last year, we did have Hurricane Nicole east of Florida. So with warm waters, that's something we're just going to have to keep an eye on still, even though we're getting to the final six weeks. Now, you can see on our infrared, we do have now major Hurricane Norma here positioned off the southwest coast of Mexico. And mid to late October is actually a favorable one to see stronger storms here in the eastern Pacific, especially during an El Nino when water temperatures are running above average. A uh, very large storm system. It has grown from a tropical storm this time yesterday to a powerful hurricane today. Uh, and it may be getting close to its peak here before wind shear starts to increase. That we do have to keep an eye on, not just in Mexico, but across the central United States next week, as it could send quite a bit of moisture up into places that need some rain, but it could be a little bit too much rain for a short amount of time. Uh, the central part of the tropics is pretty quiet. We do have some thunderstorm activity to keep an eye on in Central America, as well as Cuba and the Bahamas. A front's been kind of camped out here for a while with stronger wind shear. I don't expect anything to develop in the near term. As we maybe get closer to the end of the month, though, we do have to keep a little bit closer eye on this area. With waters being very warm, if the wind shear lessens, we could still see a late season storm system. There's still some names on the list that we might potentially get to here. And then we're going to keep an eye on this area of thunderstorms right now, which is not any threat to land, but could potentially threaten the Mexican Riviera here uh, in places where Max impacted the area here about nine or 10 days ago. Uh, in the Atlantic, this is Tropical Storm Tammy, and you can see it's a lot better organized than this time yesterday. Still dealing with wind shear. It's still uh, favorably producing that heavy rain on the eastern side of the circulation. And so we're rooting for the system to make a turn quicker so that all that really heavy rain stays mainly east of the islands. I don't necessarily think that's going to be the case, but that's what we're pulling for at this point. And north and west, you see this big blow up of thunderstorms. That's uh, coming from kind of a mid-level low and actually the remains of what was Tropical Storm Sean this time last week. So let's take a closer look at some of these features here. Here's the Caribbean. 
And you'll notice a huge area of dry air aloft here over Florida and then higher clouds streaming in from the jet stream over the Pacific. And in Central America, you don't really see anything organizing. There's just too much wind shear. There's moisture in place, so heavy rain is certainly going to be possible. Those of you that are planning cruises into this area, obviously you're going to be dealing with some rain as you typically would this time of the year. It's a wet time of the year. And then you see our upper level low here near the Virgin Islands in Puerto Rico that's pulling the remains of Sean northwestward well to the north of these islands. And eventually that's going to draw Tammy into this direction as well. Here is a look at Tropical Storm Tammy, and you can see the outflows beginning to improve. There's still some wind shear on the southwesterly side, keeping most of the thunderstorms off to the east of the center. And then behind it, we do have some showers and storms to keep an eye on, but nothing that's going to show us any organization. In fact, the air is pretty stable here with a large region of high pressure in place over the central Atlantic Ocean. Here is a closer look here now at Tropical Storm Tammy, and you can see we're now getting uh, some sunlight here in the central Atlantic. And you can see some pretty deep convection going here, some higher cloud tops, and then you see more stable air over the islands. So for the time being, we should be in good shape in the islands. Flash forward to about this time tomorrow, I think conditions do start to head downhill on Barbados and eventually in places like Dominica, Guadeloupe, um, and some of the other surrounding islands here right in the middle of the Lesser Antilles. We could see some heavier showers and storms over the Virgin Islands today in Puerto Rico as well. That's not associated with Tammy, but from the remains of Sean, just some lingering moisture and an upper level trough in place as well. Here's a look at the next 10 days from the European Ensemble. And this is where we see potentially tropical storm winds, a very high chance that this impacts the central islands here, basically the edge of Barbados on northward all the way up into the Northern Leeward Islands and perhaps the US and British Virgin Islands, especially the British ones, but even the US ones. You can see Bermuda's right here, really tough to see on the map. And I, I would love to get some pens out for you guys, but it's just going to make a mess here. So I'm going to keep it simple. But you can see the tropical storm potential is still pretty moderate here, but we're seeing things turning away from Bermuda. We're going to have a recurving storm, as you might expect this time of the year. Elsewhere in the Pacific, we have a decent chance of seeing a tropical storm towards about the seven to 10, ten day stretch here south of the Mexican Riviera. That could be potentially Otis, my man. And then over here in the Atlantic, we are dealing with a non-tropical low, which is battered northwestern France, southwestern England, and Ireland. This is uh, Storm Babette, winds 60 miles per hour or so, and we're going to deal with some nasty weather in southwestern Ireland today from it. Um, looking at the chance for any kind of hurricane force winds, and we don't see it in the Pacific, we don't see it here off the British Isles, but we do see a potential it's a small chance, but a 10% chance that maybe this system tries to become a hurricane and brings a little bit of hurricane conditions uh, to the Leeward Islands and maybe the British Virgin Islands. But most of the models show the intensification coming a little bit later after it pulls away next week uh, into the central Atlantic, staying well south and east of Bermuda. So that's what we're going to watch here. The National Hurricane Center is now projecting this to become a hurricane, but after it moves well to the north, of the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico. Um, this is our window of potential um, movement of our central part of our storm. You can see it goes right over some pretty warm waters. That's what these hash lines are, high ocean heat content. This doesn't factor in wind shear, but overall the warm waters have seemed to outdo the wind shear this year. And we've had several storms and only a few that really did get super strong like Franklin and Adalia, but and Lee, of course, but um, still storms a storm. It adds to the numbers. It obviously gets people talking. It's got the news outlets going nuts, even though it's not really gonna be a, an extremely hazardous situation, but certainly one that we need to watch very closely here. And you can see in 36 hours, a stronger tropical storm that is approaching Dominica. And then in 48 hours, that gets us to about five, six in the morning on Saturday, we potentially have a landfalling storm system near Guadalupe. And then that goes over Anguilla, and Antigua, Barbuda, and maybe the British Virgin Islands here as we get to Saturday afternoon, Saturday night. This system will pull away and potentially strengthen into a hurricane late in the weekend or at the beginning of next week. And then it's gonna head into cooler water as you guys can see the colors start getting cooler. And at that point, we'll start to see a transition into a post-tropical system by the time we get to next Tuesday or Wednesday. Here's where we have tropical storm watches and Barbados is included because the storm may get close enough on the northern side to produce tropical storm conditions. Uh, we also have the island here of, I believe this is a uh, Saint, gosh, I'm sorry, Fort de France. Um, it's south of, Gua of uh, Dominica. Dominica is in this tropical storm watch. Oh, we're going to get some labels for you guys. There we go. 
Uh, Martinique. I, I knew Martinique. I need to go visit. Martinique is in the Tropical Storm Watch. Dominica is in the Tropical Storm Watch. Guadeloupe is in the Tropical Storm Watch. That includes this island here off to the south and east. And then uh, the center of the storm could come very close to Montserrat, also to St. John's, Artiga, Antigua, and Barbuda. St. Kitts and Nevis is under that tropical storm watch. I do think as we get further into the day today, we will see tropical storm watches for St. Bartholomew, as Bartholomew, uh, as well as Anguilla. I apologize, I'm gonna work on my pronunciations here. And then eventually the Northern Leeward Islands uh, and the British Virgin Islands could be under a tropical storm watch. It's not out of the question. Some of these islands here could be under a hurricane watch by the time we get to tonight or tomorrow as the wind forecast could potentially climb some more from what we're seeing here. But I don't think we're talking a destructive hurricane. Maybe it tries to get to that strength here. But um, if, if history shows us anything from this season, things are going to take a little bit longer to get going in this part of the world. You can see there is a split in the model guidance. And models are struggling with the intensity of Tammy. The system is strengthening a little bit. It's growing, but a lot of models show it not getting to that point. And as a result, they're pulling it closer to Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. It's still a possibility. So if you're in Puerto Rico, you need to watch this, at least for some gusty winds, if not heavy rain. But the consensus takes it a little bit more to the north, right over Guadalupe, Montserrat, and over the Virgin Islands in about 72 hours. That gets us to uh, early in the day on Sunday. After that, more than likely it's turning away, but we do still want to keep an eye on solutions. If it stays weaker, then it may try to go a little bit more to the west. You can see our intensity forecast. There's that split again. The weaker systems that we're pulling it west barely keep it to tropical storm strength and kill it beyond that. I do think that is a possibility, uh, but the consensus shows gradual intensification and potentially a category one hurricane after it moves away from the Caribbean islands here uh, towards next Monday night and Tuesday. The ensemble trends, as you could expect, are shifting back to the left. They're correcting as the storm has been a little bit slower in organizing itself. And the later that happens, the more westward these systems tend to go. But you can see in the longer range, the ensemble mean, that's the average of all the ensembles, is actually making a harder turn to the right, which is great news for you in Bermuda. Uh, here is a look at the European ensemble. You can see that hard right and get some interesting solutions in the longer term. If the system dies, maybe it tries to hang to the left here, but honestly, these solutions probably are not even dealing with a tropical system. They're probably dealing with a remnant low. So we're gonna keep an eye on it for you guys, um, but I'm not predicting that this is going to try to turn back and hit the East Coast as a hurricane or anything crazy like that. Um, we, we fell for that head fake during um, uh, Idalia where, gosh, the models try to pull part of the center back and into warmer water toward Florida. And then they try to pull it back around Bermuda. And then eventually they said, ah, it's just going to go up towards Canada, which seems to be where everything wants to go right now. Here is the HAFS tropical model. And you can see the structure of this storm is expected to gradually improve. But you can see there's still a lot of westerlies here on the southwest side here with weaker winds. So really, this is an east and north loaded storm system. Pretty typical for this time of the year. It is expected to strengthen, though. And you can see as we get to this time tomorrow morning, uh, winds are going to pick up a little bit more. And then as we get to tomorrow afternoon, this is six o'clock. Um, so right as it's getting dark, we do see winds starting to pick up on Guadalupe and on Dominica and Montserrat. Uh, and then as we get into Saturday morning, we could see wind gusts that approach 50 to 60 miles per hour across the Leeward Islands. So if the HAFS model is right, it's not going to be a powerful storm, but it will strengthen some and we may get these wind gusts that are over 40 miles per hour, maybe even touching 70 miles per hour, depending on how the structure improves. Um, it looks like it'll be a little bit stronger later on Saturday. This is three o'clock Saturday afternoon, wind gusts to maybe as much as 50 to 60 miles per hour on Anguilla and even in Antigua and Barbuda. And then the British Virgin Islands may have wind gusts over 40 miles per hour. So at the very least, I think we're going to have some flooding and power outages across some of these islands. And the worst of that weather is going to be actually after the storm passes on Saturday afternoon and Saturday night. As we get into Sunday, the, the general feeling is that this is going to turn away from Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. But if it stays weaker, then we could have a weaker solution somewhere in here. So keep an eye on that. We will see some strengthening before we hit the colder waters here later Monday and Monday night. Uh, potential wind gusts from the European, you can see very strong winds if this intensifies, but the general track takes those strongest winds just to the east of the island. So right now we're not dealing with hurricane warnings or even hurricane watches. 
However, if this uh, shifts any what any bit to the west, even by 100 miles, then we do have that potential to see hurricane force wind if the storm gets its act together, which is possible right now, but not what I'm predicting. Um, but right now, wind gusts 40 to 50 miles per hour seem to be a likely scenario. Over 80 or 90 miles per hour is possible, but I don't think over the islands. It'll be just offshore. Uh, here's a look at potential rainfall, and this is the bigger concern. We saw a lot of rain back with uh, Philippe here, the kind of the weakest, longest lasting tropical storm I'd ever seen. But because it wasn't moving quickly, it produced a lot of rainfall. We see that set up here again, where amounts could go over two inches in Anguilla and over an inch and a half in Guadeloupe. As we get up to the northern Leeward Islands, we see amounts of two to three inches. And if the European is right, amounts over six inches are possible, but just offshore. If it shifts west, then that potential rain could be a bigger deal here for the Leeward Islands and maybe the northern Windward Islands as well. And then that heavy rain will shift to the Virgin Islands and maybe to Puerto Rico here later on in the weekend. Behind this system, we do have potentially more rain coming later next week, uh, kind of a trough that lingers in the area. So if you are planning any kind of cruise or travel into these islands, be prepared for a lot of rain next week and even beyond. In the Pacific, two systems we're tracking. Uh, Norma's now a major hurricane. Winds are 120 miles per hour, uh, strengthened from 65 this time yesterday to 120 and may still be strengthening a little bit more. Uh, fortunately, not impacting land for the time being, but that could be an issue down the road. Uh, tracking northward now at about six miles per hour, so it is moving pretty slowly. Behind it, we've got uh, a new Invest EP91. That's an area of thunderstorms that models are now running on to see what happens and a low chance that develops through the end of the week, but then a high chance over the weekend and especially next week, 80% chance. And it could end up being a depression and eventually tropical storm Otis south of the Riviera here later next week. Here is the satellite image. And Norma is a very big storm, lots of outflow here, the storm slowing down and tracking to the north, doing a little bit of a loop, but a pinwheel eye or pinhole eye, um, and certainly a strong storm, kind of like what we saw gosh, what, eight, nine days ago with Hurricane Lydia. Uh, fortunately, this thing is not accelerating towards the coast. It's not going to hit hard as a Category 4. It's actually going to slow down and ingest some cooler water and stronger wind shear. So it should be starting to weaken towards the weekend here. But it could be a problem for Cabo San Lucas. Could also be a problem north of Mazatlan here in Mexico. Here's our next area to keep an eye on. Right now, it's got to wait for uh, Norman to get out of the way before it becomes Otis. That's probably going to take a few more days. Here's a closer look at Norma, and this could be a problem down the road, even in the United States, not because of the wind, but more because of the moisture and the increase in jet stream energy it's going to bring to an already dynamic storm, which is expected to move on shore here. So very healthy looking storm, but we're getting close to peak intensity. The National Hurricane Center believes it'll get to category four strength here later in the morning or early this afternoon and then should weaken. And you can see it's going to weaken over these cooler waters. The water's warm, but they are, they are dropping down, so we're losing that heat content that we've had over the last couple of days. And as a result, if this does make landfall over Cabo, it will probably be a Category 1 storm. And there's a chance it could even be weaker than that at tropical storm strength. Um, so we're still going to watch in case this gets stronger than predicted, which would not surprise me one bit. Uh, but it is expected to weaken as it drifts northward here later this weekend and eventually landfall potential by Sunday or early next week. Then a turn to the right, and I'm going to show you models that show you exactly where this is going to end up going. You can see the remains are going to cross uh, the Sierra Madre and then head up into West Texas. And eventually, if you continue this line further, Oklahoma and the central United States next week. Not as a tropical system, but as a remnant low. And we know those can still cause problems. Uh, we're seeing some models showing this getting to Category 4 strength later this morning or early this afternoon. Then we start to weaken the system. And generally speaking, it's going to be down to tropical storm strength before making landfall in mainland Mexico. If it does that, it may even loop around a little bit longer and then become post-tropical and then accelerate northeast as our jet kicks everything off to the north and east. That sounds technical, but here's kind of the basics. Here's kind of the basic um, gist of what's going to happen. Major hurricane right now, big but dying storm system. It's going to move slowly, hit cooler waters, get wind shear. And what we're going to have is a leftover low pressure system with moisture that very quickly races northeast and brings significant rain to parts of Texas and the southern plains towards the middle of next week. Uh, and winds could ramp up a little bit more as well out of that. Uh, you can see the GFS ensembles, some uncertainty here, some slowing down. But generally speaking, a northeasterly turn coming next week from Norma. And you can look at the tropical model and see that the storm has a very healthy structure for now. 
Uh, but over time, it is expected to weaken as it hits some cooler water. And you can see it opens up on the southern side here later tomorrow and then kind of loses somewhat of its punch by the time it affects Cabo. It is still possible we could have hurricane force wind, but you can see the tropical model indicates that would happen on the southwest side of the storm. So after it potentially makes landfall and weakens, all the strong winds kind of remain on the side over the water versus on land, which is what we're going to root for here. You can also see it's going to hang out for a while, according to this model, maybe sit over here for a couple of days. And that's not good because we're going to have extended periods of gusty winds and very heavy rainfall right on into Monday before this thing finally comes in either Monday night or Tuesday north of Mazatlan in Mexico. So that's a look at our tropics uh, closer to land here. Here is uh, Storm Babette. You can see uh, the center of it over the Bay of Biscay getting ready to hit Cork, Ireland with some really nasty wind. Uh, looking at the rest of the world really quickly, we have an invest in the South Pacific as we start getting uh, started with our next tropical season. We now have tropical storm um, Sanba, which is starting to drift over the Gulf of Tonkin towards China, but should turn back towards Vietnam and weaken next week. And we're going to keep an eye on two areas here in the Indian Ocean, the Bay of Bengal and the Arabian Sea. This one has the best chance of developing towards Oman here next week. All right, in the U.S., we've got active weather. It's going to heat up in the West. Record heat coming over the next couple of days. Still cool across the East and unsettled and unfortunately a miserable weekend for the Northeast once again. If you set your clock for the weekend in New England, you know it's coming. Uh, but the other thing I wanted to point out is that we've got a lot of cold air building here over northern Canada. Winter is coming. Uh, if you watch, watch Game of Thrones like my wife does, I've never seen the show, but winter's coming and it's going to come in pieces. The first piece drops down here into the west next week. That picks up Norma and draws it northeastward. And if enough cold air latches on, we could deal with significant snow over parts of the northern and western United States towards the second half of next week. But you see this big ridge of high pressure building over Alaska. If you are a winter weather fan in the US, this is what you wanna see. Anytime it's heating up here in Alaska, then we allow cold air to drop down into the central and eastern US. And we might, might see some pieces of that later next week um, around or just after Halloween and the beginning of November. The GFS model says uh, we are gonna have a wet week here in the east, at least a wet end to the week but this system's moving quickly, still significant rain expected for the Northeast over the weekend, and maybe some higher elevation snow across upstate New York and Vermont Sunday into Sunday night. Here comes the remains of Norma, rain picking up in Texas as soon as early in the day on Tuesday, heavy rain, thunderstorms, and we might even see some severe weather over parts of the Mississippi Valley and the Gulf South later next week. At the same time, here comes that big cold air mass dropping down into Colorado, all the way down into North Texas. We're gonna see a huge drop in temperature in Texas, Oklahoma and Kansas sometime Thursday or Friday. And with that cold air wrapping in behind this storm system, We've got the remains of a hurricane, a strong trough, and a big outbreak of cold coming behind it. We could be dealing with significant snow potentially here on the backside of our storm system, not just in Colorado, Wyoming, and South Dakota, but also over parts of Minnesota and the upper Midwest, and eventually in Ontario over next weekend. So keep an eye on that. By the way, it looks like another wet weekend as we keep our string alive here in the eastern United States. I'm not joking about it. I mean, I'm joking about it, but at this point, it just sucks, just to be honest with you guys. Um, we all want to see the sun over the weekend, and we're just not getting that. Uh, temperatures, very warm in the west, warming up across uh, the northeast here before our rain system moves in here this weekend, then turning cool again early next week in the east. We are going to see heat building ahead of our tropical feature and our front by Monday and Tuesday. And then look at this shot of cold that's getting ready to come down here on Wednesday and Thursday. And it is certainly coming. Slowly, but it is coming and we will cool down here around Halloween in the eastern US and in the south. It's probably going to take till early November for that to happen. Uh, we're looking at record temperatures today over the southwest. Let me zoom in and show that to you guys here. Uh, but we are seeing triple digit heat in the southwest, 90s in California today. That heat continues tomorrow. We start to cool down over the Pacific and then we start to see record highs on the front range and over Texas. And uh, let me shift east for you guys to see that. Here's the heat as we get to tomorrow, 94 in Austin, Texas. Uh, still pretty toasty here on Saturday, 90 degrees down in Baton Rouge. And as we get uh, to Sunday and Monday, the heat does start to break a little bit. And here comes the cold. And we're talking much chillier temperatures by the middle of next week as 30s and 40s return 
Uh, the eastern United States, though, is going to warm up next week. We start out the week in the 40s and 50s in the northeast, 60s and 70s in the southeast, 80s in Florida. And then we end the week with temperatures surging towards 70 in places like Pittsburgh and Cincinnati. So it's definitely going to get warmer, folks. Uh, the rain is also going to be pretty significant here over the weekend. I'm, I've got to move on here, but uh, parts of Maine and New England could pick up two or three inches of rain. Next week, we see significant rain over the southern plains, and then that shifts east. And then once again, we're dealing with wet weather next weekend. We're going to see a few thunderstorms later today and tonight, South Florida, um, the Outer Banks, as well as parts of the Mid-South, even coastal Louisiana. There could even be a little severe weather tomorrow in the afternoon over the low country from Jacksonville right on up to Columbia, Myrtle, and all the way to about Southport, North Carolina. Right now, mainly just a severe wind threat as we get some stronger jet stream dynamics. So be prepared for a few watches and warnings potentially in Northeast Florida, in the low country of Georgia, Midlands, and low country of South Carolina, and sneaking up into um, the uh, Grand Strand all the way over to about Bald Head Island. Here's a look at that predicted radar. And I apologize that this is a little bit slow to load here, but <clears throat> you can see fairly light rain today into this evening, but then some showers and storms are gonna try to fire up here over parts of the Tennessee Valley um, towards eight to 10 o'clock tonight. Those are gonna quickly move east and weaken. And then as we head to tomorrow, we do have some leftover showers, but additional storm development is possible in the afternoon. Um, and let me draw you eastward here to show that to you here. And here's a look at what's coming eastward here. This is our cold front approaching here this evening. This is overnight tonight, heavy rain in eastern North Carolina into early in the day tomorrow. Uh, we're going to see a wet day tomorrow over the Appalachians. Rain moves into the Charlotte area around lunchtime, then towards Raleigh in the afternoon. And here's the line of storms we're going to have to keep an eye on, mainly from about Southern Pines, right on down through Manning, all the way down to uh, near uh, Bluffton and Beaufort, South Carolina, down to Savannah. Uh, this time frame is about four o'clock, and we're going to see the best chance for that severe weather between four and about seven o'clock. Then things are going to move away and weaken. And here is our next batch of heavy rain coming up into the Northeast. And I'll show that to you here on the European. And you can see three hour rain totals could get over half an inch of rain uh, for portions of the Northeast around the Hudson Valley here later in the day tomorrow and then across New England. Uh, tomorrow morning around Boston, or I'm sorry, Saturday morning around Boston, then round two Saturday evening over much of central and eastern portions of New England, heading up into Atlantic Canada Saturday night and Sunday morning. Significant rain is coming. So um, here's a look at Canada real fast, and you all will be able to see that Nova Scotia is about to turn very wet here. Two waves, the first one early in the day Saturday uh, with three hour amounts up to 25 millimeters. So that's going to be pretty nasty then a break, and then the next wave comes in Saturday night and first thing on Sunday, Bratton Sound, PEI, all the way up to Newfoundland could pick up rainfall rates at over 10 millimeters per hour. Thank you all so much for your time today. I hope you have a wonderful day. If you did enjoy this video, please consider becoming a subscriber. And if you'd like, you can support me as a member for $9.99 a month if you feel led to. Uh, but as always, I thank you for your time. And I could not do this without my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I give God all the glory. Uh, he is a good, good God, no matter what's going on in our world. I just know I can't do this all myself. Um, I have friends and family that have been put here on earth by God to give me the support I need. You all are a blessing to me, and I want to bless you back. I will say that Paul tells the Romans church, this is my favorite verse, Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Does this mean puppy dogs, rainbows, sunshine every day for us? No, but... If you, if you trust in God uh, and he calls you to live out uh, a fruitful life, then good things are going to happen regardless. Um, the biggest thing that can happen to you is if you accept Jesus like I did, you are promised eternal life in heaven, in the heavenly kingdom with God. And so what you do on earth does matter, but honestly, it's all about that prize at the end. When your time on earth is gone, you get to live with Jesus eternally in heaven. And that to me is definitely a good thing. That is the calling that I have. I just wanted to share that news with you all, uh, no matter what you believe. And it's okay if you're not a believer as well. I mean, it's not up to me to judge. The church is full of broken people who have hurt other folks. I'm probably one of them to say the least. And all I know is that I want to pray for you if you are hurting. So if you have any prayer requests, I'm happy to pray for you. If you'd like to pray for me and feel led to, I very much appreciate that. Um, whether or not you're a believer, I still think that we all want to believe that we have a reason to be here on earth, that there is something we can be passionate about 
and that we do serve a purposeful, meaningful life. I hope you all have a great day. I'll talk to you again tomorrow morning. God bless you.